All right. Uh, the other thing, uh, all of your creation will end up over here if you can see the data folder. Um, so that's that's the folder that you need to back up if you don't want to lose everything. Um, something else now that I want to show you before we start this up. It's the announcement extensions created by uh, by Aki. Uh, I've been using them for so long that I I can't tell um, uh, which what the Savage Rules rule set would look like without those extensions because um, uh, I've been using them for so long pretty much I don't uh, I don't run without them and you're encouraged to install them because uh, what I'll show you you might not get to see or get to use uh, because you don't have them so let's share the link and showcase right now I no featured item yet all right here we go error adding website all right here we go this is located in the fantasy grounds forums in the savage world section if you can't see the link i'm sharing uh, that's where you'll find them so there's a uh, there's a whole bunch of them uh, the calendar, uh, the enhanced character sheet, the enhanced desktop images library, and combat tracker. So uh, do yourself a favor, um, download these, and once you have them downloaded, then the place to install them is in your extension folder that is located in the data folder. Uh, once you get in there, uh, you'll be able to see, change my screen, hopefully we can, can see that. All right. So this is the data folder where um, all your campaigns are stored. And over here you can see extensions. So once you have downloaded these, you just uh, copy them into that folder or you just drag them into that. So what an extension is, is basically, um, um, it could be an exception, but it's, it's, it adds on to the rule set itself. Okay, so I got, I'm going to load a campaign here. Um, let's see what I was working on. I can pick this one. And then when you scroll down, you'll see all your extensions. So you make sure they're highlighted. The desktop tracker images. Got the library. There's even another one in another tread, the NPC maker that's very useful as well the calendar over here so once you've got all the extension you need I've got the adventure deck also that's another purchase from the store uh, the hell on hell on earth reloaded that's a skin and once I start it you'll You'll see what I mean. I always like to run a test too over here. Like right now, it's telling me failure. I don't know what I did, but I can no longer. Oh, there we go. Now it's a success. It's probably just because of the bandwidth usage right now. It, it couldn't connect. So I'm going to start this up. 
Now, depending on how much stuff you have installed in your data folder, uh, primarily tokens, um, and of course your computer speed will take uh, might take longer to load up. So here we are. Uh, now on Earth, skin changes the appearance on many of the icons and sidebars, so it looks different. Uh, now I'll start with the, uh, the the options preferences over here. So you have you have a lot of options, and that will depend on your. Well, the one you pick, you choose will depend on your style of uh, GMing, uh, how much information you want to have available to the players and to yourself as well. Um, some of them are are kind of easy to figure out, and some of them, if you don't have the ex the, the enhancement extensions that I just talked about enabled. Excuse me. You won't be able to see a whole lot of these. Um, those that I like are the show Benny's on portrait, the conditions on the portrait, and especially the derived stats. Um, by having this on, uh, your players, the players will appear, of course, up here, their portrait. And by having this enabled, you get to see their parry value and their toughness value. And with the bennies, how many bennies they have as well. Uh, you can put that to GM only if some of your players don't like to share their parry value or toughness for some reason. It can be shared with the GM only. And why I like this is because just at a glance, if... Uh, an NPC attacks them, I know right away if it's a hit or a miss. Otherwise, I would have to ask them or open up their character sheet and look inside, and it takes longer. So um, then you have one for the adventure deck. Again, that that's, that's a purchase. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have used it, and it's very neat to use. In most groups, uh, once you start using it, and if you take it away from the players, they they get upset even. Uh, and this you can access through the tools uh, sidebar over here. It's that deck to the right, the adventure deck. All right, and that um, there's there are two ways to deal the cards that I know of anyway. Um, through the PCs, I have one made up up here, so I can auto deal the cards by clicking in that box, the left box, and then the bennies on the right one, and it automatically knows the rank. So a novice would only get one card. Season two and veteran true uh, three. And in that case, he's got three cards. And then on their character sheet, they get to see these cards. If they hover over it, because the image is kind of small, they can't read it on the image. Uh, they can read it up there in that box. And then when they want to play it, they just drag it and drop it. And then it describes uh, what the card does. Uh, they can also share those cards with other players by, again, dragging the card and dropping it in the portrait of the, the player they want to share it with. So that's that's with the cards. You can deal them like this, or you can just drag them from the tools menu over here and drop one. It randomly selects a card and drops it in. Uh, same with the bennies. You can award bennies by just dropping them on the portrait. Uh, 
for you if you want to play your GM bennies. Well, you've got the, the Benny one right next to it. Uh, default is one per player, so you've got four players. You get four bennies. Again, it's uh, control, mouse wheel up. Or you can drop them manually in that box. And then what that's, that does is that when you actually spend one, it tells the players that it's the GM that's using a Benny. If they like to keep a, a tally on the number of uh, Benny Bennies you've used this session, <laughs> that's one way to do it. Um, what else with the options? Um, again, uh, by default, for editing with your mouse wheel, uh, by the uh, yeah by default. It uses control first, but uh, you can switch it to another key on your keyboard. Or if you set it as always, then you no longer need to hold down a button, but uh, you might find yourself scrolling up and down some values that you didn't intend to uh, in the first place. So personally, I just leave it at that. I'm used to... Uh, running it like that. Uh, another one that's really useful, auto NPC numbering. Uh, I, I put that on a pen. That means that, uh, uh, let's see here. I want to put some, some creatures in there. So I'm going to find, I'm going to find some, some creatures. Uh, let's put uh, let's put a dragon in there. Now, if I want to add more more dragons, I hold down Alt and then click on that grouping icon right here. And then it will add more dragons, and at the same time, it will give it a number. Uh, that's what the auto NPC numbering will do. If I select random, then it will just come up with really high numbers that don't really follow any particular order. Um, if that works for you, good. <laughs> That's what it's there for. But if it's set at off, then it will just call it dragon every time and then it will become harder for you to keep track of uh, of what's going on. Uh, so let's say I want to uh, clear this tracker. I got an option here to clear the entire tracker. I'm sure. And now it's gone. It's empty. Okay. Uh, then the uh, uh, the mini tracker. Um, you can set it that you control it yourself or at off. That means that any time a player can bring it up and look at it. If you have a surprise in that tracker, then they'll be able to see it. Uh, so I usually leave that at on, although I should keep it at off most, uh, most of the time because I always forget to share it with the players. Uh, host see the share combat tracker that well you've got the one for the players over here and it will look like this it's not populated but if I leave that at on that means I'll see what the players tracker look like and what my tracker looks like and then it's it's a matter of real estate with your screen um, I've upgraded to two monitors I'm not using both of them right now, but um, so that means real estate is not as big a deal for me anymore. But uh, you'll see that just right now I've got a couple screens and can't really spare any more space, so I usually leave that at off. Uh, show effects on the tracker. Um, the ring bell, I, I put that at on. Sometimes people get, players get distracted 
when it's their turn for combat in a combat tracker, a uh, bell will ring and they'll remind them, hey, you know, it's your turn. Uh, auto scale the grid, that was a nice addition. I love that stuff. Uh, 80% or 100%, that means that if you have a bunch of different uh, tokens of different sizes, um, that will save you nightmares uh, of having to scale those to the proper size on a map if you choose to use one. Uh, the combat effects, too, and the conditions, which we'll, we'll get uh, on later. Um, uh, then uh, let's uh, let's show the com uh, the chase tracker a little bit here. Uh, no, before let's uh, all right the wild die so savage rules uh, it's a big deal. Uh, this should be turned on so that means uh, wild uh, wild cards will roll automatically roll their wild die. Uh, if you need to change it to switch it uh, in a game like uh, uh, Savage Sizz Rain, for instance, at some point when you reach Heroic, I believe, uh, your wild die switches to a D8, so you can switch it to a D8. That'll be the case for everybody. Or we can show you later on the character sheet, you can change wild die for certain specific skills as well. And then dealing cards, while well, you you reshuffle the deck after a joker, reload the deck, you can you can deal cards public like this. Um, you can See, like right now, and I think it's working only for the next version. But you could deal a hand, or you can deal it straight to a player up here. As for the uh, the combat tracker, uh, the tracker will take care of dealing the cards for you, so you don't have to worry about that. There's even options to uh, go on hold, uh, that sort of thing, dealing more cards. Uh, so with the chase tracker, uh, we need to need to populate it a little bit here to be able to show it off better. So we're gonna have this guy here, and then he's gonna he's gonna be chased again. We can put orcs this time around. Now, uh, I find that it goes a lot faster and it helps to group your NPCs. I've seen GM not group their uh, extras at all, but again, it's all down out on your keyboard. Add the orcs. Again, you see I turn it off so they all look like orcs and then I can collapse it. It says orc plus three. I know there are four of them. So, uh, a chase, let's make it a, uh, a foot chase that would be using agility. So I can, let me make some room here. All right, so agility, I roll it. Again, you see it rolled the wild die. A two, so no card for, uh, for Marion. So over here, then uh, the group of orcs. Agility, so that's that's much better. That'll be four cards. So toggle cards. All right. So we see the cards here. One, two, three, four cards. And then you get to pick the card you want. In this case, it's not a club, so I'll go with the highest one. And then I click on reorder combatants. So now he gets he gets to be first. 
the or groups get to be first. So every turn, that's that's how you do it. You just deal the cards using the the deck here. All right, and then if it turns into uh, a battle, if someone attacks someone else, you can turn that off over here with toggle cards. And now it looks just like a combat tracker. And then when it's time to go again, deal the cards, you can put the cards back up there. That's that's basically how it works. Um, there's a long video on this. It's about, I think, 20 minutes long. So if... Uh, Okay, uh, so yeah, watch that if you want to go more in depth with it. Uh, I've got a question here about the Combat Survival Guide by JC. Uh, that's uh, that's fan made. Um, I'm not totally sure who made it. I think uh, um, Kevin. Uh, made it or updated it to the latest uh, Savage Worlds uh, that available down here in the library. Um, it's it's a fan-made product that was that's been available online for the longest time to help uh, players uh, new to Savage Worlds uh, get the best out of combat and whatnot. And this is an implementation of this. So it's a neat little uh, module to have and to share with new players. Uh, I can, uh, uh, after this, I can even uh, post it on the, on the forums because it's, I don't think there's any copyright that goes into that at all. And it was fan made. All right, uh, the, the combat tracker, well, if you're going to run anything uh, with a map, all right, you want the stuff to be that originates from the combat tracker. I mean, basically, uh, combat tracker, was supposed to be just to keep track of combat order. And then uh, some, some very smart people started figuring out other ways to uh, make the best out of this tool to where um, it, it really is kind of the roots of a, an encounter in many ways. Uh, you can run it without all the automation that the combat tracker offers. Uh, by just throwing uh, tokens onto a map, make your own map, but really it just it just helps out uh, to have everything origina originating from that. Uh, so again, I'll just set myself a small grid. Another trick too, if you're if you're not too much into prep time for a game, uh, with this uh, image extension, what I like to do is you have three layers over here. Um, the first layer could be an image that you have on there. And then the second layer, I have a grid over here. And nice little trick. Let's see. Okay, so I've got I've got tiles over here. All right, uh, someone on uh, Google Plus and Patreon, I found that uh, from Frank. He makes these great tiles. <clears throat> so I've got tiles that I can use, but I don't want uh, those tokens to be scaled to the grid yet. All right, so we got. Well, let's start with a room over here. This should be a four by four room. So again, I need to to play with the scale here a little bit. So I'll 
All right, that looks 4x4 four four right here. I've scrolled up and down to change the scale of the map. And now I can lock the token scale. Now if I back away, it still stays at 4x4. Four four. And then I can grab another tile here. That's a 2x8. See how it automatically rescaled it? Now it centers it. Hold on. Where is that at? Alright. Help me out here, Aki. How do I uh, stop the the tokens from locking? Uh, I think uh, you Allowing should go. Grid. Should you go with the, the preferences and see the option there? I I don't remember like correctly myself, but if you go preferences, there is this kind of option for like uh, snap snapping those tokens in the middle of the grid. So I think that's what you're looking for here. Let's see. Oh, that's auto scale to grid. No, I found it before. I think it was straight from over here. Block tokens. No, those are locked. Anyway, so that's how you could lay out a quick encounter using uh, using tokens. They're basically tiles that have been uh, downsized, uh, small enough to be able to be used like this. So, let's see, I've got another one here, can lock it on, and then just by laying out all these tiles, you've got a quick dungeon, if that's your thing, and then you switch over to the play layer. The reason you do this is because, let's say I want to put the orcs on there. Show everything there in that room, and then this guy's over here. All right. If I if I don't play with the layers like this, when I go to try to move the orc, I might be moving the. See, like right now, if I try to move those tiles in the second layer they won't move, so they'll stay in place. That way players, when they try to move their tokens, they're not gonna mess around with uh, the tiles that you've laid out. All right, and then, let's see. Oh, it's done. All right. It's a couple things. We've got the Benny, the wild card, the chase tracker, the preferences, uh, the extensions. Uh, well, now uh, um, I don't see any more questions, so let's uh, let's turn this over to you for now, Aki, and show us what's coming up next. Uh, I mean, don't be uh, don't be frustrated or anything. Uh, the new update doesn't change a whole lot. It just adds on uh, more features, more options for you to run your games, um, and a lot of a lot of these changes are under the hood, and nobody really can see them unless you're a developer like Eki. So um, it's not going to change uh, a whole lot of things about how Savage Worlds work. It just, again, more options. So uh, let's turn this over to you and show us uh, what's coming up next. So yeah, thanks Eric for a great presentation. And like, thank you also for giving this don't panic uh, notification for this uh, viewers or listeners. Uh, the 
few things about the background. Why? Why? What is the thing about this Savage for number four version number four? Is so the, you might have heard that the fancy crowns is providing this core RPG, which which can be like there's a new way for developing rule sets that you can really base your rule set on top of existing ones that is being. Uh, supported and developed by these might works the developers of the whole fancy crowns so the main main focus here uh, main focus here was to bring the savage world on top of this core RPG that was the main topic that started like nine months ago and this is this is based on that fact the second second uh, second thing second approach with it I actually did here is that the, those, as, as Eric mentioned, there are several of those enhancement extensions that he mentioned. So we wanted to like e incorporate those features within the core rule set. And I think about 90% of those features are now in the core rule set. So those, you don't have to like mangle with those extensions anymore, at least not that much. Uh, and that's what the Savage World is. Savage World uh, next version is going to be about. And yeah, I can share you some features. Eric has given me a few things and give me only 20 minutes to demonstrate few, demonstrate those. So this is going to be Mission Impossible. So I'm not going to give you uh, overall demonstration or tutorial or anything about Savage, next Savage World version. Just giving you the most highlighted uh, feature uh, show offs what is coming what is coming on next uh, version so uh, I'm checking from the Eric's list like I asked Eric from giving me a list of what are the most wanted features so the first one is this uh, targeting so previous rule sets like D&D &D rule sets uh, pathfinders they had this uh, targeting and you know auto uh, detect uh, hits and damage calculation built in those rule sets. So we kind of wanted to bring that feature in the Savage Worlds. But, and yeah, it, it's here, but word of warning that it's not so automated as in Dungeons and Dragons or everything. Savage World is more like more flexible rule set and the, this targeting implementation, this is just more about like Basic ma basic number comparison. When you make an attack, it will compare your attack roll against a parry or number four. And when you make a damage roll, it compares with the uh, toughness, make some uh, armor piercing calculation against your armor and such. So it, it won't understand this uh, situational, exceptional situation that, oh, you're prone, there will be some penalties or bonuses hitting you. It doesn't understand that. So the users have to manage that themselves. It will just do the basic uh, basic uh, comparison. But yeah, just few things uh, to demonstrate, give what is what is going on here. As you can see from my view, the rules that is kind of same. They are different kind of icons, different kind of new stuff here, but. The generally the rules that is the same. You can use it the same way you did with the with the current version of Savage World rule set. It just provides new tools, new ways of doing, but it doesn't force you to use those. It, those are just like add-ons that you might want to use if your playstyle goes with those. Uh, but yeah, about the targeting, let's go through it. I'm sorry I speak too much. So. Uh, Let's prepare, just gonna prepare some adventure. I have some map, I have uh, some tokens that just took some uh, player characters. I got some enemies. I'm just gonna populate the map slightly here, just gonna put it here. And basically, uh, let's, okay, before actually we can go, we can go the details about target and we have to go a few things through which are not included in previous Savage World rule sets, but we need those in to really use this targeting efficiently. The first thing is that uh, there's a new field next to toughness. There's an, this, is, this is the armor, uh, armor of your character. So we need to know what is your ar armor value that will be uh, calculated in your toughness. So we know how to armor pierce, how much points of toughness armor piercing can pe pierce through and everything. So this field is added there so when you you can either like when you use there are options these are also in those uh, 
Savage Roadmap version 3 provided. So one moment. Gonna see through. So there is this uh, auto update derivative stats. So if it's set off, then this field is just a number field. It doesn't do anything magical. But if it's set on, then all of these fields, these derivative stats fields, gonna be like you can really more uh, modify those more easily. So like what I did, I just double click this field, I get new window where I, I can set like values, like I get my armor, when I, I can click it off, you see the toughness value went all, all down and when I enable it, it goes up. I could say like armor power, let's say it turns two and it's green, it, it increases the overall toughness. The main idea that we need to know how, what is your armor, uh, what your a character is wearing for armor piercing purposes. The second thing uh, with your it's is the is the armor piercing itself. So if you see your uh, weapons, you this is the same stuff you can do with this in Savage or Tree. But in this window, there's a new field called the AP. So you can record the armor piercing value for your weapons, and you should do this if you want to use this targeting efficiently. So let's say this this doesn't want this doesn't have anything but the iron fist. So the lem lem is adapt. He's a, he has um, edge of this adapt. So he is able to consume one power point to uh, grant like AP two for his fist. So I just like click it there and I can just put the number two for his AP value here. Okay. So these are the basics that you need to do before you wanna go with the targeting. But okay, let's go on the main topic. So how does targeting work? So basically, as you might know, there are two, two ways of doing the targeting. You could just track any of your dice, like let's say let's open this lem character. Uh, you could track any of your trade die, your attack or your damage and drop it on top of any token and that will be targeted against that one. Let's say it's this uh, Lamb makes a fist in your face attack against this token. I just drag it and drop it. Uh, it makes a comparison here. So we know, okay, let's he attack. He got score of 10 and the Skira has parry of five. We can also see it from here. So the parry is five. So, oh, it's, it's a race. And as you might see, this damage bonus uh, is being highlighted automatically. Like, you know, we know, we know it's a race. So the next roll will be damage roll anyway, so it's highlighted. And I could do the same, so I just track again and drop it there. Ooh, that's a nice. And 20, that's three wounds. So I just know, okay, this guy is number two, so this guy gets two wounds, is shaken, and well, he's out of the game. <laughs> easy, easy go, easy come. Uh, the other way for doing uh, this targeting uh, is you, is to use this in combat tracker. You're able to like down and click any any token. So you see it renders this kind of arrow. It also highlights that in combat tracker. The, oh. This is your turn, and you're targeting that guy. I also could target that guy. I can see who are your targets at the moment. So let's say uh, Lucky will uh, target this guy, and how we, how you can make attack. So I targeted the guy. It's now blue lighted there. There's new buttons here. So there's this small button. If I set it on, there's like three three uh, states. This is off. It, you can see it's faded, uh, faded away uh, icon. If I put it like highlighted, it means targeting is on, and I can just like just double click or drag your attack, and it also goes like it it does the target targeted attack against that one. Uh, and the same goes with damage. So I just roll it that way, and let's see what I use. Noble Scatan, and here comes the damage. Just double click or just drag it, drop it. And here we see some armor and arm, 
armor and armor piercing values. So he had armor 1, but this weapon has armor piercing 2. So basically his toughness is 6 that caused 2 wounds and the guy is also down. So 2 wounds shaken and bam. Didn't you say also that it's possible to do it if you don't use a map by using control? Yeah, so there is, this is like one, one new thing here, so we have new preference options. This is, I, I, I could explain why this made this way, but you have anyway preferences for like, you can set like shortcut for targeting, control. That means that when you hold control down, you see the icon gets highlighted. So anytime I hold control down, you can do like attack. Let's say this guy, as a game master, I might just like, I'm, I'm so slow, I don't wanna go track and drop in my dice. This guy just targets this guy and makes a throwing attack. And well, I just hold the control down, double click, and it made an attack. And as you could see, like it's throwing. So the target number is not against your parry. It's a guy's number four, the, the range attack stuff. So that so this tool will understand should it use parry or number four for comparison. Uh, there's also like as I can say as I so told that there's three stage versus this uh, none highlighted. This is the basic stuff. When you do it this, when it looks when the icon looks like this, it will the rules that will understand what is. What, what number it will be doing the attack against. So if you use melee, melee weapons, it will use your parry. If you use uh, range attacks or drone weapons, it will use the number four. But the second state, the icon that just look this way, it's, it, it is, will be forcing to make the comparison against your parry. So let's say this guy wants to use uh, like range weapon, but he's in a uh, close combat, he's just adjacent to this guy, so he, he's not going to roll against number four, he's ro going to roll his range attack against that guy's uh, uh, parry. So just, <coughs> he's there, and let's put it that, and this might be buggy, but just, just gonna, yeah, it, it, actually no, it went against parry, so that's what it is. So yeah, these are the basic stuff for like doing targeting. And like I mentioned, this is not going to be a tutorial how to do this. There's a other guys developing, like Kevin Doswell is going to be do great tutorial videos about how these are going to work in the next version. But I'm just going to walk through like the basics. What are the ideas behind all this stuff? And I got five minutes more, so <laughs> we can cover this damage as well. Well, you got five minutes unless, uh, yeah. If there's no more questions, and I might add a couple things, but if there are no more questions, you've pretty much got all the time you want. We've got another hour, so I had sort of scheduled the second hour in case we had questions, and we'd go over that. I just want to say before you go on, uh, Frank asked me to uh, share the link to his uh, Patreon uh, for his uh, tiles, and it's now in the showcase. So, if you want uh, great tiles, great value, uh, head on over there. Great customer service too. Great guy. So, uh, here's your plug, Frank. All right, go on, Eki. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and yeah, Eric, if if there will be Q and A's, please disturb me and stop me, and just let's go with those. You're better managing those in a Google Hangout, I can see. But yet, uh, shortly we could cover as well these. There are new fields. Uh, these are for like damage roll purposes. Like, as I mentioned, this targeting is not going to cover all this magical stuff. Like, it won't understand those situ situational, uh, I mean exceptional situations where you, like for example, if the person wear, has a shield, it will grant like Two, two points of armor if somebody's making a range attack against this guy. So these fields are for that purposes. So let's say, for example, this Skira is going to do a range attack uh, against Lem. But Lem is like, let's just, let, let's, cons let's assume that he just hit, he got this like plus, let's, let's make it hit there. So I'm gonna just make, he gonna make a shooting. 
Well, <laughs> you still missed. Anyway, he will <laughs> hit. So let's say he, he will hit anyways. So I, I could say that, okay, but Lem has a shield. So let's say we can use the first field. It's about armor adjustment. I could just put number two. That means the Lem is, Lem's armor values be, will be increased by, by two when he makes the attack. So here we go again, just unharmed. So here we see that the toughness is now 13 because of the armor grants plus two. The lamb does only have the toughness of 13, but 13 plus two, magic. The second one is about armor piercing. So in some situations, uh, the attacks armor piercing could be better. For example, let's say, let's say swarms. Swarms would ignore all of your armor if you're not fully uh, protected. So game master could be like just making sword swarm attack and let's say let's hey plus 99 armor piercing because it's gonna eat all of your armor value when you attack let's say lem has armor five and it's gonna this for demonstration purposes just add it there and just make this roll let's say bow attack doesn't make any sense but yeah like you see it ate up all five points of armor so it's now uh, this roll compared to eight but Heck, the lamb is so tough. <laughs> it doesn't get any wounds or shakiness. Uh, you can also go, this field also can go downwards. For for instance, uh, if I remember right, the Kevlar armors, like in modern settings, they could, inc uh, they could uh, negate several points of armor piercing. So you can, co you can use this field for that same purpose. Like when you go with shooting, against Persian with the Kevlar armor, the guy might say, hey, this is a Kevlar, you have to take four points down and the person puts minus four there and makes the roll. And it works that way. The last field is about damage multiplier. So basically you always use this one time. So this will just multiply the damage by two or either half the damage by, double by, double the damage or half the damage. So there are like rules, for example, if you have the edge of like deadly blow or deadly aim, I don't remember, are those the correct names? But if you just make it double or half, then your next damage roll. Nice, so now I'm able to do damage when I double the, double the damage. So you see that uh, it rolled 11. So when I double it, it's gonna be 22 and that will cause two wounds for Lem. Nice. Uh, basically, I think that's it for the targeting stuff. So there will be a tutorial the, video how to use this, but this is just like show offing. Don't you have also uh, auto damage apply, auto apply damage for uh, yeah, these attacks? Yes, I, I can go through that as well. So there is an option. Uh, called the, I think it's in a combat. Yeah, auto apply damage. So I use it usually off. But when you have it on, I'm gonna clear the chat for for demonstration purposes. Just gonna find the small stack here. So when you enable this option, the uh, auto apply damage in combat section, that means if you roll the damage, it will automatically apply that for the guys. So I'm gonna just pull new combat round. This guy, all. This guy makes an attack. Let's say he just, he has plus force for some reason. It's gonna want, want to make this good roll. Just make, yes, and it goes. So now it's a race, so okay, I will do the damage against Lem. So when I roll, please be high again. Unharm, okay, I'm just gonna do it second time, just for demonstration. And maybe double the damage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna use this. All right, so shaken. As you could see, the result is shaken. So you could see this shaken was popped in uh, automatically there. That is one one way for people might want to use it. But personally, I think like there's a, there's a phase of soaking and everything. This is just one one way you could do. But there will be I will have my personal interest for impl uh, improving this so that you might just have confirmation dialogue or something like you can confirm the damage just or make the soak roll. All right, we've got a question from uh, Calum here and he wants to know about the modifiers and effects. Uh, he says, uh, I know there is a lot less of them in uh, Savage Worlds, however, is there plans to have them in version 
4.1 uh, was thinking of uh, adding a, uh, something that reminds us about wild swing while uh, wild attack minus yeah. two to parry. Uh, currently, it's only the form of an icon that appears on the map and also on the combat tracker. Uh, so is there a way uh, eventually that we'll see uh, effects that will uh, change the state of uh, combat? Yeah, so this is also already in uh, the current Savage World. What we have this option called the show combat effects. It can be tilted on off or, but I'll just set it on and let's say Lem is being like, Lem is, uh, this, this, Lem is going to do wild attack. I will just write wild attack. And there are a few things, like you see, there are a few keywords that will in, uh, like highlight this small icon there. It's called the wild attack is one. You could write defend. It's also defending. You could go like prone. Prone is one. And unarmed, if I don't remember. Those are the four icons that will just, I, I personally found that those are the most important that will be highlighted on token if you use that option. Uh, and there is some plans. There is plans for make this a little bit better. So if you have the like wild attack, it will automatically decrease your parry and increase your attack. But this is not going to be implemented in the next version. But it is, it is an idea that is going going through a lot of times. So yeah, any other questions regarding that one? No, I mean you could. Go over real quick on how you can populate your own library of uh, effects yeah. and modifiers. Yeah, so personally when I play the game, I usually have populated all these stuff. So I, I have like just written, this is, I just written the, all these like possible possibilities like defend is it's it's an action then barrier are the powers and everything in this in this uh, next version of savage world this effects look kind of different I'm gonna take this away just go through so let's say we have like we have only few fields like there's one one number field only in the previous version I mean the current version there's like two but Anyways, this is just like the name of the power or the effect. This is the duration, how many durations it will last. And this toggle is going to be like, is it, uh, is it power or not? As you can see, for example, in defense, it's not highlight. So this is not a power. But uh, for and full defense is not a power, but like growth, entangleable, invisibility, those are powers. And they have small thing, I will explain it later, small thing uh, to affect the game. The next icon is about is it maintainable? I don't see, I don't know if you see it right, but it's a small icon like defense is not maintainable, but fly will be maintainable. And if you, is the, if the effect is, can be shown for players. So I have populated all this. You can do it that yourself, just just like adding adding new writing writing the name, putting all the values and such. So you can do it very easily yourself. Um, and what I usually do in games, let's say like the lucky has a he can use a power he has armor, so I can just drag here and drop it there, and it populates all the fields. So now because it's called uh, because it's a power, so I highlighted this uh, icon. It shows that oh, this this is the armor, and it was cast on Lucky Lorenzo's turn. So it's now Lucky Lucky's turn. But if I would like cast it also to Lem, I can also drop it here. It also shows that oh, it it was cast in Lucky's turn. That also means that the duration is going down on Lucky's turn. As you can see, it's Lucky's next turn. It's not. It, the duration has decreased slightly. Again, it's slightly decreased, and now it's a third, third, uh, third turn, and it's going to say in chat that hey, the armor power, uh, power on Lucky Lorenzo and Lem is about to expire. Do you want to like a maintain? Because the maintain icon was talk, toggled. It will ask that question. If it's not maintainable, it to just uh, take that effect off. So I can just click it here. It's been 
uh, maintained now. As you can see, uh, duration is being increased by one for all of those persons that I, the power was cast on. And now the, the effect itself will not change the character's toughness, uh, but, and I'm not sure if you can do it for toughness, but I see that for uh, this next uh, version of Savage Worlds, there's a way to deal with uh, uh, lower and uh, boost trait on yeah. the character sheet. So, yeah, we can go that. So the effect effects doesn't affect your uh, your stats. So that's that's that you have to do it manually yourself. But the the feature Eric was mentioning. So any trait in this next uh, version is is able to like you can go to any trait. Let's just say let's, let's pick some like strength. Lem strength, we can double, uh, I mean, right click on that, uh, select, uh, this, this is a new option, boost or lower trade. And you, you have option to put like from minus, minus two to plus two. That is for purpose, like there's this boost and lower uh, power. It's at least, at least in my games, it's kind of commonly used sometimes. So I, I had it the issue that when they use the power, they just change the number of die and they forgot when they, Power expired. This is. Did you were always that strong? No, actually, I just been playing because I forgot to add it. So this been this been added because of that. So we could just go right click, select boost rate, and let's say plus one. So it will increase the die, uh, and it will highlight also like oh this been increased by this kind of power. So you can more easily see that oh I maybe I probably should take that away because it has been already expired. That also goes for all the NPCs, like let's say we have a big Sammy here, we can go with the fighting, uh, let's say boost, uh, plus two there, and we have a bigger, uh, better fighting, or just like increase, decrease it by one. This applies to all your trade roles in character sheet, in NPC sheet, in, for skills, attributes, and such. All right. But for toughness, you would have to do it the same way you showed us at first with the uh, auto-derived stats. Yeah. To actually double-click on the field and then add a field for the, the armor, right? Yeah. So personally, if I will use the armor, it can be pierced, if I remember right. If I will go with armor power, I will ask my player that increase your uh, toughness by one. So I, you know, I... I added this in the when I started a uh, presentation, so I just, just would ask him to go there and just add something that would increase your uh, armor by two. So, or if you have raised number four, I will I will do it this way. Something else, Eric? You have something? You you gave the list, but like if you have something specific in your mind, I can focus on those. Well, you could show a, a real quick too as an option um, instead of using the targeting because I know it's a hot topic on the forums. But uh, you've added a, a race calculator uh, yep. for the new version. If you could show that. Yep. So in the options, like player and the game master has an option. It's called in the client category. It's called the race calcul calculator and. When you hit it, like there's a three stage of default smart. So if it's default or smart, it will just be like a field here. So this can be used to just calculate how many races you get. Let's just let's make a agility roll here. Number two, I can track it here, and it says, oh, it's a failure. Well, <laughs> that's easy easy calculation. But let's say just just got better number and track it here. It's a success now. So this is this tool is just meant for if you roll really high, the game master like oh it, it, it should, he should probably go calculating how many races it will be like let's say this this is just for again demonstration purposes. But nice twenty four I just see it's four races when you roll twenty four and compare with number four that's four races. Uh, in addition, for the target to that, you can add the yeah. the field the toughness and parry fields yeah. too right. Yeah, so, yeah, that's correct. So in combat tracker or 
in MPC seed, you could just like if you if you don't want to use the targeting, uh, which I presented before, you could just see okay, this guy's been targeted. You can double click his toughness, and you can see the toughness value is being populated in the race calculator, and then you might just roll your uh, fighting roll, I mean the, the damage roll, and just track and see three races, you're dead. The same goes like you could just double click your parry. It, actually, you could double click any of your derivative stats, whether in combat tracker or in uh, or in MPC sheet, it is just like how you're gonna do it. You could also like middle mouse click it so to transfer the number there. And yeah, yeah. Eric asked me last time, or so at some point, like what is the like? There's three different states. There's off, default, and smart. What is the difference here? So the smart and the default, it's it's a very minor thing. Uh, when you use the smart mode. Whenever you track, like let's say let's track big sum is parry, I can drop it anywhere. I can even drop it on score, but it understands that that is a derivative stat. It's never going to be a score in your game. It will be target. So it populate this field instead of this field. If this option is set to default, let's say I could just track and drop. It's it's a little bit dumber. Like okay, you drop it and it just populate the field that you drop in. So the smart it just like understand that there is that's always should go on the target field instead of score field. And yeah, you can move this. This is like this is a panel like normal, but you can like right click on it, uh, select unlock position, and just move it where you really want it. The same goes with all the chat. I think you're aware, or like modifier stack. Let's see where I can find the small smallest corner. Like I can move it here, just if I want. This is just like one of those panels. See, I didn't know that. That's good to know. These uh, are the ones like these are the ones like you know hidden hidden features that really like it's hard to document it, document these, but these are just the things. But yeah, I can also reset those to original positions because I really prefer them to be in <laughs> those positions. Yeah, but sometimes yeah, I, it's great. <laughs> Thanks. See, uh, <laughs> we learn things. That's why I wanted to have you here with us today because you know a lot more than I do. So um, that's great stuff. Keep that stuff coming. Yeah, it's hard to focus on few things like this. Just pop into my mind if, like, I go through. But like I mentioned, we are planning to make these tutorial videos a little bit better than like previous version, just so you know to get people to let people know how to use this rule set and re we really don't want to them to use this rule set for like one way we want them to be able to do it the way they like the game style they prefer all this targeting and this cal race calculator race calculators those are just tools that you might use if you like those and that's the main focus on this next uh, savage world rule set there yeah, are keep in mind yeah. too that uh... Uh, if you want to use this version right now, it's it's available to you. All you have to do is um, on your startup screen, you select settings, and instead of the live version, you just check the box for dev version, and then you click update, and you'll be able to use all this right now. Uh, yep. The only thing to keep in mind is that if you've purchased many products through the store, some of them have not been ported over to that new version yet, so you might not have access to all your products. But if you just want to run a uh, simple, straight out of the box Savage Rolls Deluxe game, everything is there right now. I think the Horror Companion is ready, the Fantasy Companion also. Uh, ETU that was just released, that one is available too. Uh, any any others that are ready? How like frost? I've, uh, I've yeah. I think like eighty or ninety percent of all those products they are already there. I'm not sure. Like we we have been updating these. Uh, uh, you know, there's extensions and those module contents and everything. So most of the products are there. But the main main thing why we like I mentioned that we are going to be going to the beta, beta testing phase. 
Currently, you can get these rules from dev dev uh, channel. We have been using these to just make things sure that we have the majority of all the products compatible. But like I said, after this Fantasy Crowns convention, we are going to put this to be beta testing phase. So it's more easily accessible, and we we will love to get people to try this out, give us feedback, because we want to find uh, create this to be better and greater, bit by bit, of course. Right, and don't don't be scared that it will make your Fantasy Grounds crashed. I used it, I ran two games with it, uh, the new version, and not even one console error. It just runs really smooth. And uh, but if you happen to find something, then that's what Aki and Ben and Kevin want to know because that's part of their uh, their testing phase. So um, you know, just go on there and port your new campaign over to uh, the new version. You can also upgrade it, uh, an existing campaign, uh, through a tool available on. The fantasy grounds uh, forums. I yeah. Think, so, right? uh, no, no, actually, actually, uh, when if you you would use this dev channel or when we go to beta testing channel, if you launch your uh, old uh, Savage World campaign, it will ask you like, do you want to convert to this next to new rule set, and it will do it automatically. Just well, like you have to just click yes or whatever, okay there, and it will do it automatically. You don't have to get any extension to do that work for you. Oh, cool. But 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 there is there is a tool. If you want to go back, like let's let, you want to go back to stable version, you can go and there is a tool for doing that. Like you is a tool for converting uh, this Savage Road version four campaign back to uh, version three campaign. Great. Yeah. Uh, something else too that's going to be new uh, in in the current version you have access to some tables. If you uh, type uh, slash table, you'll get the uh, injury tables and the critical hits for the vehicles and the vehicles out of control. You get minimal table support, but with the layering on top of the core RPG, we get what is now real tables. Um, it would be great at some point if we could have tables that support the cards because in many games um, it uses cards to randomly generate uh, uh, results but we're not there yet but uh, could you just show us those new tables and how they work? Yeah so um, some basic uh, information here so the old previous uh, Savage World had this last table, so last command like Eric mentioned, it's been now taken away completely. I'm sorry if you have made some extensions that use that, those are not going to work in this version. You should probably like to convert those to modules. There's no tool for doing it automatically, but we are uh, we are willing to help you if you have issues. Just like give us a, send us email and we will help you. But this, yeah, this tables comes from the core RPG. Like we have a new icon here for the tables. And there's a one thing, currently I'm using this Savage World tree, the, the, the stable version. So I don't have the, uh, the modules from the, from the deluxe book, but I have like my fantasy companion. Uh, tables here, so I can demonstrate this one. I'm not going to go uh, details how to use the tables as is, like uh, the Doc Davidson, the uh, the owner of the Fantasy Grounds, was doing a great demonstration video regarding that already. So check that out if you want to know how to create tables. But this is just like we have, you know, in Fantasy Company, you have tables for generating uh, magical stuff, and this is one of those. So I can just go click this. First table, magical item, and we have lots of stuff. And click here, and we see a lots of rolling. Come on, come on, give me a magical stuff. Nice. So here we can see that he somebody got a belt, and it has some miscellaneous, miscellaneous powers. Okay, roll from that one, throwing and blah blah blah. So like, I'm not gonna go details what this is about, but the thing is like the, all those tables 
major of those uh, majority of those tables have been converted for these rollable tables and like like this this is more easily using so you can do it at least I love I love to create my loot for players using these yeah, kinds just one roll and everything's everything gets generated with yeah one click that's great and if I want like name named item just roll it here oh 20 oh my god <laughs> so I got the rolling rat so I got the item here as well so there's a link which opens the description and I can go sharing for players uh, anything else Eric like this this will bring me to party sheet this is this is one thing that might be good for explaining but do you have something else to like to hear well I'd like to um to touch on uh, the uh, library extension on now uh, in most other games it seems that it's limited to story entries and images tokens that kind of thing that works great when uh, you want to create a, a, a scenario or a campaign uh, use one of your PDFs and then uh, enter everything and then you create a module and then you can use that that's that's kind of easy to do what what is hard hard to do unless you have the right tool which is one of the uh, extensions that you created the library extension is that it allows you to create uh, not only uh, personalities, uh, monsters, and story entries, but also uh, content like items, edges, hindrances, that sort of thing that uh, normally you wouldn't be able to create unless you know how to code XML, for instance. I don't, yeah. and I've been using that library ex extension. I ran, recently I ran a uh, Beast and Barbarians game, and it's not available in the store right now. But I was able to create the player's guide for that PDF just using your library extension. Could you just uh, demo this for a couple of minutes yeah. to show how easy it is to create your own uh, module? Yeah, so this uh, enhanced library extension is already available for the current service world. It's in a, in the same, uh, uh, say you can find it from the same link that Eric sent you. But one one correction here, you mentioned that you can create weapons and items such. In the next Savage World rules that you can also do it in within the campaign. You don't have to use the extension. So when you click these items, you see there are numbers of things. There are parcels, uh, armors, weapons, vehicles. So you can create all of the, all of this stuff. All I mean the items, like the normal items, or you can go to armor. Just let's create a new one here. Just something. You can fill all those items within your campaigns, and you can like export those to modules as well. So this is awesome. one. Cor this is one uh, co uh, like correction in there but if we go to this I, like I'm like you might have seen like I went back to my launcher and I selected this enhanced library extension so we can go a little bit through it so what it provides you is that you can really create these modules with using the fancy crowns uh, user interface first things you need to do is to create a book just right click here and you have the new option called the create book it just create something. You can give it a name like my module, and you can give a category like I just call it companion. Can I really write? So it's a my module with companion, and when I select it, like it it is not highlighted so well. But when you click it, this is a, this is my book. I can go right click in there and select create a page. So uh, generally, when you ever select a module you see there's something in fancy crowns terms these are the books and the book has a pages so I select my book I go I create a page I have several options here like I could create a list of something 
a text of something or a gear. So let's say I want to just create a text. It's just for one case. They are more like, what is the window going to be used for this? A mini window, wide window, normal, narrow, short text list. So it's going to go with the normal one. Yeah, it's going to go there, click and introduction, blah, blah, blah. So this is one way. Yeah, there's, a, there's an issue like it didn't remain this one until I just click away from my book and get back. But this, this, is, this is a small, small quirk here. But I also could create a list of skills, edges, hindrances, powers. Let's say I want to create edges, like I have my own, my own custom edges. I could give some description, blah, blah, blah. I'm really bad writing this stuff down. Then I can go right clicking on it and select, um, I'm sorry, right clicking here. If, if you right click here, it's just gonna go edit your text. But if you click below this level, it goes, it has an option of manage and you can go create entry. I can go like, let's say, well, it's gonna call it like big chin. <laughs> I will have my Army of Darkness game tomorrow, so I love the big chin uh, from the or original uh, RPG. Let's say this goes for novice, can have it, and then some description. And it, it will work as a normal edge, so you can go like, the player can see this module you created, and you can just go drag and dropping this to your edges, and it just works as normally. It's a big thing. So, so what it allows you to do basically is that if you create a campaign and the players don't have the PDF version or the hardcover book for that setting, even if it's a custom creation, uh, they'll have access to all that information within your campaign when the sit at your table when they're connected to your server they'll have all that information available to them and they can't access that once they're gone so it, it basically protects uh, copyright from other books so, yeah. so those content that you create here those will be become a co uh, part of your campaign and like Eric mentioned only when player connects, they can see that material. As a game master, if you if you you can also use this tool to create, you know, you can create your own book, you can create your own content, you can also go and export this as a no module. Like if you go to the export command, there is this new thing called the custom library, and I mean the custom custom library and custom references. I just gonna give some names here, test, test. And now this book is being exported. I can use it in my other campaigns as well. So if I just go and just quickly create a new campaign, let's say this one, I'm gonna say like my, yeah, let's go one moment. <laughs> And uh, let's see where I have my test. I have my test book here. And uh, yeah, there's a glitch, uh, but don't worry about it. Actually, yeah, this is this will this will be fixed. But as you can see, uh, I have my companion called Test, and I got my Edge Big Chin here in my other company. Uh, I mean, other campaign at the moment. And I didn't use the. I didn't select this. Uh, library enhance libraries to get this. You can you it, it just exports it as like normal uh, module, but it, there will be some features that you will get if you use the extension. So <laughs> yeah, uh, personally, yeah, I've been using it for a long time. For your own purposes, it works great because uh, yeah, you have all the content you need. One thing you have to keep in mind is that it, it has its limitation. Once you've created a page, you can't reorder those pages and change a whole lot from what you initially create. So uh, you either want to go through the book, you want to create 
page by page from the PDF, uh, or if you're knowledgeable a little bit in XML, after you've created that module, you can go back and edit that file to reorder your index, uh, which is pretty much what I had to do uh, with ETU. I built ETU using the library extension, and then I had a friend of mine, uh, and I'm grateful for that, who has knowledge with XML. He went in there and edited that file so it is uh, professional looking, I would say, something that I uh, that I'm proud to share with someone else as opposed to the raw product that worked great just for me and my group because we, we, we were using it but I well first of all I couldn't share it with anybody because that violate the copyright rules but also because it was a bit of a mess it was not always in the right order or didn't look right so the library extension will work great for your own use, your own personal use. Uh, just keep in mind, don't don't share it unless uh, you want to get in trouble. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's, that's about it. it. For me, the library extension is, is my main one. Without it, I'd be bound to running whatever is available in the store or running it without any uh, reference material for running my game. There's a way to actually uh, create an edge straight from the character sheet, but yeah. the player, I mean, unless the player has the book, he has, if he levels up, he gains an advance, he doesn't have access to that. So that's why the reference module is is such a great tool. Yeah. So if you like, if you would like to, you don't have to do these modules. Like Eric said, it's great to have those. But if you don't have those modules, you can also like, if you plan, for example, one-shot games, you could just go create your skills. Like if if you create a custom skill in this next version, there's a new icon here which allows you to write the stuff. Let's say fighting and agility this is allowed like you it, it provides you you can do more like detailed information on all of your edges you could write big stories about all these edges you could just write all, everything down that's but one currently thing. in version 3 the current version you can only do that by using the character sheet extension right yes, yes that's that's correct but the character sheet Charter sheet extension has been uh, embedded within this next version. Great. Yeah. And a reminder, those extensions, they're always free and they're always maintained. They're not going to break your game. They're not going to uh, create uh, console errors or make it crash. Uh, Aki takes great pride in making very, very good extensions. And whenever you encounter a bug, uh, usually within the day, you'll pounce on it and have it fixed and release another version that will fix your problem. Yeah, so you can go, you can see uh, uh, errors or bugs, but personally, I, I, wa I want to fix those e fast. I always use those ex extensions in my game, and trust me, when I see a bug, I'm, I'm going to just crush it fast as possible. <laughs> it, will it, it will just ruin my game if there are bugs in my, in my games from extensions, so I will, I will try to do my best to work this out fast. Any questions, guys? We got another 25 minutes here. If not... Uh... Uh, Aki's got plenty to talk about with uh, new features, so ask your questions, or uh, I'll take it your silence means you want to hear more from Aki, so uh, Aki, go ahead and show us some more stuff. Yeah, um, let's see, I, I think I just open quickly the forums, I have my own uh, change lock there, so I can easily see there are a few, like, it's, it, they are grouped a little bit better, so I can... Remember what I have done here. Just a quick moment. 
Okay, here's a good question. Uh, when you use the dev version, do you still need the current extensions loaded? No, you don't. They use new ones, they use new extensions. And as Eki pointed out, most of the features from those extensions have been ported over to the new version. Uh, that happens every time uh, there's a new update to the Savage Worlds rule set. Most of Eki's features uh, from the extensions are ported over uh, to the new update. So, uh, yeah, if you use dev, you don't need uh, those extensions because most of the stuff is incorporated into it. But there are new um, there are new extensions, and while uh, Aki talks here, I'll send the link to those new extensions. So yeah, when we are going to beta testing phase, I will post those uh, new version extensions in this the same same link that Eric is going to posting there. But currently, they are uh, you you can get those from different. Uh, thread in the Fancy Crunch forums. So they are accessible. You don't and even cannot use those old extensions in this new version. Like I said, like ni about 90% of those features, they are already incorporated in, so you don't need those. The only extension, like what comes to my mind, is the enhanced library. That is never going to be incorporated within the rule set. Correct me if I'm going to be wrong within like a few years, but anyways. That is one one uh, extension that you might want to use. There's also this enhanced desktop, but it doesn't have like there's only one feature. But you might not know. It's only for my own personal use. Basically, it had some features, but we incorporate those to rule set already. Uh, one thing, one warning thing, like there there is this enhanced images, which Eric is also using. Uh, that's a sad story because personally I don't have any use for that extension and I don't have any like motivation to keep that updated. I'm sorry like it has just slowed my gaming time, uh, gaming down but if I find those like uh, you, some people provided nice tiles maybe I'll go, go back to them but I, I didn't have any tiles beforehand so I didn't have any use for that extension I have really not made it compatible with the next version. Yeah, I mean, so. sometimes I use it with uh, furniture also. Like I have uh, a set of Deadlands uh, maps that come with furniture, and then I can use this, the second uh, layer to put that furniture on there. But uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but since it's going to be part of core RP. There is currently a, an image extension for Core RPG that allows you to have those three layer uh, images. Well, that should be compatible, right? Yeah. So there are. Yeah. So you could. You can use this. Uh, this the same enhanced images which was provided for Core RPG, but. It will conflict with some of these uh, fancy, I mean, Savage Word features. For example, you cannot you cannot create these templates for like small plus, medium plus, big plus, and you don't have the scales. There are a few things that will be missing from uh, from there, and I cannot be hundred percent sure that it will be fully compatible. But if I will do the conver uh, conversion. I will use that as a base, so there is a there's a chance, but I haven't really tested that yet. Uh, that's fine. I mean, with all the features you uh, you release, uh, uh, maybe we can live without the the image extension for a while. It really or depends. Maybe it will just bug you so much that uh, you'll have no choice but to work <laughs> on it. Yeah, true. If I get the nice tiles, maybe I will try start using because. But the thing is, I don't, I didn't have any use it for like several months, like in my games, like in half a, half a year. I just prepare all my maps be, maps beforehand, and if I get a nice pile of tiles, maybe I'll just see more potential on it and do some work. Yeah, see, maybe if uh, Frank sends you some free tiles, you'll you'll do the extension for free. <laughs> That's a trade off. <laughs> I won't make any promises, but yeah. Uh, any other questions regarding features? One that pops to my mind is the card deck enhancement. Like, 
GARTEC is being redefined in this new rule set and it provides you several features. Eric, you sent me this list of wanted features. You didn't mention about it, but I think you haven't been playing with it. Uh, maybe not. Well, sh show it to us. Then. So I'm talking about this card deck. So this has been slightly improved. So in instead of instead of just having the card that you're gonna do, you can do tracking. Like you can track your cards here. You can go playing like trapping, track and dropping to chat. And one moment, I have my player connection coming in. I'm just gonna call it Mokka. Mok up my dog's name. <laughs> okay, I don't have any good portrait. But uh, yeah, I could just like, okay, I have a public, I want to share this to this guy, so I just track it here. So now it, now this is in Mokka's hand. I also like can track more cards from here or here. And you can go sifting cards, like, you know, I just track cards, whatever I want. You can also, as a game master, you can also like right click and let's say, let's take this card away, let's take this card away. And maybe I'm going to track and put this one back to deck so it will say that, okay, it's now being returned back. And you can also do much more, like, for example, you have a combat tracker. You can also track, let's, let's, let's make, let's give Joker here. So, bang, uh, you have a Joker. See, I know that's been asked for, uh, this feature has been asked for a long time to be, able to drag cards onto the tracker. That's great. Yeah. So now it's possible to know it also applies for um, for the chase tracker. Just going to populate few few persons here. Just going to put this one here. So I, I could like track and drop Joker here and maybe just like this is just like how do you want to you can always use this like the Eric was demonstrating but you can also like ah Nah, let's take that away because it's too big or bad. Or he, he can use some some edges or like that. I, at least I think there's this tactician edge that grants you that you can roll your battle, knowledge battle, and it grants you cards, and you can pick one of your cards to be replacing your uh, action cards. So this is like one one thing that has been changed, and this is hard to be uh, explain it, demonstrate it unless done with this kind of. Uh, Google Hangout sessions. So yeah, this is probably why I didn't pick up on it from the description. It didn't mean anything to me, but now that I see it, uh, it's great because I can think of uh, one. I think it's an edge or maybe a power in the Halfrost that allows uh, allows you to reorder change the cards around from your party so uh, some of them uh, some people in your party will go first and second uh, and that way you you can change can you change within the tracker itself also so, yeah that's that's a limitation I didn't want like the tracker I th there's no chance to track the card from a, away from it so it's been assigned there and it will stick there it it, it 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 would be a possibility, but personally, I was thinking like it might be more like propulsion, but you just you want to move your tracker, you go and you track your card away or something like that. So it is not being supported now, but there is a chance for it if 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 there will be like a lot of uh, questions about it, it, it can be implemented pretty easily. To not be even not even from the token section where you have access to all the cards you can't drag it I from was, there. I, I was thinking like and I started to implement feature where you could track uh, tokens uh, from from here yeah but I kind of stopped doing it because I felt that the game master could go really like cheating like he, if he, he could just go drag drop those cards like from here to there. I didn't want to implement that because I felt that if Gamester ever draws a card, he goes and it's always a random card. A random card. That's it. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. But uh, actually, a Game Master can cheat a little bit, so he can go tracking. Oh, that's nine. If he doesn't drop it anywhere, it goes back to deck and he go like, do this. What I want to give to my players, come on, bigger, bigger. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I didn't want to make it for cheating purposes. But if they will be question, like one, it will be become one at least. I will be may, probably make it because I had that in my mind as well. 
All right, something else. Something like that comes to my mind from Compact Tracker point of view. Um, let's say I'm going to put that one away. Uh, the cards as well. I'm going to take this away. So you might have situation like the old, old in old uh, Savage World rule set. You could like uh, like Eric mentioned. You could have group of like this, and when you track from this icon and drop it, it just multiplies the guy like like this. This is what happens. But in this new rule set, when you track, how, how did I just do that? That's my trick. I'm gonna, not going to explain it. But if you track from here and drop it, it doesn't create a new one. It moves that one token. As you can see, there was three guys in that group, but now this guy is here. So I can just go back and track it here. So it's been, I can move people from group to another. So I could put Lem on Lucky's. Uh, Group. Actually, I will take Lucky away from that. And as you can see, uh, the card is being duplicated. So let's say we have le we have this Skirai group here. I'll take this targeting away from distracting. So I have a Skirai group, and this guy like let's let's go on hold. But the number five doesn't want to go on hold. So I can just drag it away from the group. It will share the same card, and this this group can go on hold, and this guy can continue fighting or do whatever he wants. This is one thing like it's it's different from a previous version. Kind of much, I don't know how many how much people use it, but I use it so much that I had to change it to work like this. Yeah, I can see the use in it. I know there is a, a Beasts and Barbarians um, module that at, at some point you're, uh, the group is in trouble and they can help each other out but how they do that is by um, using the same card as the, the, the other player you're with, the other pay, uh, PC you're with. So that would be a way of doing that. You could drag one PC and attach it to another yeah. PC, yeah. and it becomes, they become a group, so they act on the same card. Yeah, true that. That's great. Uh, why not show the uh, party sheet uh, and the parcels and all that? I know Savage Rules is not really uh, loot and <laughs> magical gear oriented by, uh, by default, but there are some planned features for the party sheet as well for, I think, or maybe it's already available, allies, right? Yeah, so the new core RPG introduced uh, feature is this party sheet, and it's been implemented for this Savage World. So what you can do here is, like, you can, you can like, place any... I these items, whenever the Game Master, like, puts items here, let's say, I will be just sharing some items quickly, finding... I'm going to some weapons, whatever items I put here, I put a dagger and a flail, sorry, flail, this will be visible, this is like shared for all the MP uh, the, uh, players, so players have the similar icon, they go click it and they see, oh, these are, these are like common, these are items in common space, I could also put some money here, let's say, oh, not that much, uh, silver, and the, uh, the players can see this one. And this is like party loot. So people could like see, oh, we looted this kind of, these people that we defeated and we got these items. And you can just go drag and drop in, like let's put this to Mokka. So Mokka, I just drag it here as a game. Uh, yeah, so I just drag it here and I can see that there's a new weapon. Mokka has a flail now. So. If you wanna like this one catch the players, if you as a player you track and drop it, it will like you know move the item. And in chat you see that oh Mokka took this flail, and Mokka will take this dagger as well. Uh, as a game master, you can also do it like track away from the character sheet anyway. But as a game master, there's a one catch that needs to be know that when you track and just drop, you don't do anything. 
That means it shares the sheet. It doesn't give it to any way. This is this is like legacy thing. Like this has been like around for so many years. We don't want to break this one down. If you, as a game master, want to give the item, not sh not share the window. If you want to give it, you hold the Alt down and drop it. That's how you give the item away. That's one like things to catch. But this party sheet can also be like, you know, you can share these items. You can also say that, okay, you can assign some people. I'm going to track Mokka here. Actually, not there. That's the wrong place. But here, actually, I will, demo, I will demonstrate a little, little bit more. So in party sheet, uh, take my old tokens away. This is important. Like, you have to track all the players to this spot. These are like when you have the players here, it will recognize that, oh, this will be, this is the party, this watch order. This is the place where you have to have all these characters and the tool will understand them. Thereafter, I could like write here like as an assignment, oh, Mo Mokka is going to, one moment, why is not understanding me? Yeah, now it understood. So Mokka, it understood, Mokka is part of my party, so I can just assign it name here and I could just like, click here to assign the item automatically. We could have like big pile of stuff and everybody like game master writes their names like who will get this, who will get that and it will assign those stuff automatically. But there seems to be an issue regarding that one that will be fixed. But Mocha got 500 silver pieces. Uh, this is this is the inventory. Then we have the order. This doesn't have any Savage Word related stuff. This is just like you could just put your tokens and show how what is the watch order when they are sleeping and in camp and what is the uh, what is their uh, order marching order when they might encounter something you could just replicate that order in in map what is more important we have the other tab sheet and we have allies party allies so you could have like I could at least in my games I have a lot of allies like there are so many people that players could like ask like hey come on join us for this adventure I don't want them to have those allies on their character sheet all the time because when I go to combat I want to ask I want to automatically include all the allies they have with them at the moment so this this place in party sheet, party sheet is kind of like you know lobby hall when you don't have the guy with you, you can just drag, drag and drop it back. The game, players can do the same stuff. So they just drag and drop their NPCs that are not with them at the moment. And they can drag, drag and drop it back to their sheet who are with them. So that is, that's one feature that I use uh, very often. Good. And then I think there's a feature uh, coming up that you're working on where players will be able to share their uh, adventure cards to show so that they don't have to uh, read them out loud. They'll know what everybody has for their adventure cards and then decide to share from that. Is that right? Yeah, so I have been implementing this enhanced adventure deck extension. Uh, this, I think you're mentioning this trading feature. So it's, it's, it's I haven't had the time to really, or. Uh, time or motivation to implement it at all. So it will come at, at some point, definitely, but not at the moment. So under construction, mate. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, guys, so we got five minutes left. Uh, so last call for questions uh, before uh, we bow out for the day. Uh, I see we've had uh, anywhere from six to ten viewers and I'm sure a lot more will watch on YouTube after it's over uh, so uh, maybe another feature from the list or maybe something that you uh, you think could benefits uh, benefit GMs uh, for their game mm, well the first thing that pops into my mind is the setting rules so in the options, we have a lot of new stuff here, but there's a new section called the setting rules. So there are three, three setting rules implemented in the in the uh, rule set. So we have the choker. Choker is wild. You can toggle all of these settings on or off. 
So let's say that we have when when we enable this Joker is wild, and let's say let's take that away. Whenever uh, I clear the chat as well. Whenever we whenever a player character gets a Joker, and it it is not going to work well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just cheat a little bit. I'm going to go to the card deck and find my Joker. So just takes some time. Not Joker yet. I cleared my hand. I will eventually get my Joker this way. Yeah, there is my Joker. I go, sorry, go and drag and drop it here. Actually, not a skier. I will drop it here. And when this is on, you can see, oh, Joker's wild. Everybody gets a Benny. As you can see, Benny was increased automatically there. That's the Joker's wild. So it will, whenever, whenever a player Joker gets Joker, Benny time for everybody. Uh, the now no powers uh, feature. Let's say Lem has a powerpoints. So if you enable this no powerpoint, that just means that it will hide your powerpoints away from your character sheet, from your mini sheet. This is like uh, the interface zero comes to my mind, where you want to prefer, or actually the ETU as well. Like I think they they use the no powerpoints. Yeah, a lot cases. of yeah, a lot of settings actually use uh, no PowerPoints. Hal Frost as well. So. Yeah, so like it would be na nasty to have these PowerPoints here all the time if you don't really really use them in your settings. So that's like that is just one thing. But there is another thing regarding PowerPoints that might be different. So for example, uh, the PowerPoints uh, are set on now. So Usually you should see them here, but in this next version, because the lucky doesn't have any arcane type, it doesn't have to show the PowerPoint. What is what? What will be the benefit showing those? But if you select like magic, I'm sorry, this will be off. So I'm sorry. <laughs> so when you select your uh, arcane background or type, you get your PowerPoints. But if it's all if it's uh, none, you don't you don't see your PowerPoints. That's Makes one sense. thing. One thing to make, yeah, clear. And then we have this skill specialization. This is just a small addition. So if it's enabled, you can go to your skills. You can right-click and create entry, add specialization, and just mountains. And you can you can add like there's a new line. This doesn't have any super special. Uh, systematic way of managing it. It just like adds a new possibility for adding specialization here, like swords. All the management, like you know, you have to manage all this stuff yourself. I just know I'm just gonna put it there. So if you just you know if you use this skill specialization, you know you have minus two if you are not specialized in that skill. So if you want like. You have a new item that uses a weapon that you don't. You're not specialized. You just add this minus two manually to that attack. It doesn't do anything like uh, behind the screen. Just like extra lines behind. I mean below your uh, skills if it's enabled. If it's disabled, those are hidden. Awesome. Well, that looks like. Uh... It's all the time we have. Two hours flew by, and we could keep uh, talking for uh, maybe four more hours and not cover everything. So, um, if uh, if you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to uh, contact uh, Aki or myself. Uh, we're on we're on Google Plus, and we're on the uh, Fantasy Grounds forums as well. Uh, so. Uh, show up on uh, on the forums, uh, say hi, ask questions. Uh, you'll see that uh, people answer questions uh, promptly. And uh, again, I thank everybody for showing up, uh, being uh, such a great audience, asking questions. That was great. And uh, of course, thanks Eki for uh, for coming on today. That was great. You show us some. Great stuff. A lot of stuff I didn't know about, uh, especially the moving the chat window around and uh, 
uh, the modifier box that was uh, quite a revelation for me I must say <laughs> so uh, those hidden features are great yeah, so thanks, everybody oh. you're welcome everybody have a great weekend a great FG con uh, there's still some spots left if you want to join a game so go ahead and sign up and uh, come play some games for FG con have a great day yeah thank you Eric for this presentation very nice session you're welcome.